Hello, my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you're great. I am doing wonderfully. Um, for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, my name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And to all of my gluttons for punishment who keep coming back for more, it is amazing to see you as always. So, Today, we are gonna be doing some propagating. I am going to take you through a bunch of different propagations on a few different plants. Uh, we're gonna start out with some more common um, plants and we're gonna kinda go up to a little bit less common, more trendy, bougie plants. Um, yeah, so that is what we're doing today, a little chop and prop. So if that sounds like something that you would like to stick around and watch, then please, stick around and watch. Okay, the first plant that I want to propagate today and show you how to propagate today is this guy. So this is a combination of um, the only two Marantas that I have, or prayer plants. Uh, so here we have the red Maranta. Um, trying to get a little bit more of a characteristic red Maranta leaf to show you. Um, so she was quite large and um, unfortunately she got thrips so anyway we've gotten rid of the thrips but I did have to cut her back substantially uh, there is another little piece put back here and then in with this pot I also put my variegated Maranta um, so this guy was also huge and also got thrips and so <laughs> I thought they would just do well together in any case, today we're going to show you how to propagate this guy first and um, then we'll just get into some other stuff and slowly make our way up to some of the stuff that's more scary. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to readjust the camera so you can see down on the table and I will show you if you want to propagate, the, propagate these guys uh, where you need to cut them and um, my preferred method of propagating Maranta. So propagating plants is a great idea for a lot of different reasons. So the first thing being you can multiply your plants, which is awesome. It's like free plants. Um, the second reason could be, and this is the reason that I am doing it, is just for um, to ensure, um, it's like plant insurance. Um, so this plant hasn't been doing the absolute greatest and so I want to get some propagations on here, off of here. In case I lose this plant, I've got backup. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? The other great thing about propagating your plants is that you have plants to share or trade with friends. And I think that's one of definitely the funnest uh, reason, or the most fun <laughs> reason for propagating plants. So um, first we're gonna go ahead and take a chunk off of these guys. So what you want to look for on the Maranta is the spot where the leaves kind of converge or come together. So there's like a little, it's almost like a knuckle. That one's not a great example. These are really short internodes. Um, this one's probably a better one to show you on. So let me get you in close here. Okay, so if you can see this part here, so this is what I consider a knuckle or a node and you want to cut right below it so <laughs> like a tool I didn't actually bring the tools to do this so let me grab my scissors and then I will show you okay that helps so um, I am going to take this guy and I am going to cut as far below the node as I can but not so that I'm into this next one damaging it you want a little bit of a space uh, between oops between the node and the cut that way if you experience any kind of rot or mush <laughs> you can uh, usually nip that before it gets to the node itself so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that right here there we go so you can see that node right there so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in some water so this is one that I did previously. This is a cutting that uh, a friend of mine, uh, she wanted this plant. So I said, don't go out and buy it. I will just cut a piece of my plant and I will give it to you. Um, so this one has been rooting for just a couple of weeks, I think. They root really, really fast. 
And so there is, let's see if I can show you here. There is the roots on this guy. Lots of roots. They root really quickly and I just have it sitting in this, and basically it's rooting in water. Um, there's a lot of water in this LECA. I just have the LECA in there to kind of keep it more upright. Uh, so that guy is really ready to be potted. Um, this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick right down in there. Get in there. Come on now. There we go. And then I'll just leave her in there and she will grow roots and then we can pot her up. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and really quickly take uh, another cutting off my red Maranta and we will stick her in there as well. So I think I wanna take this big, long, chunky piece. There's a really, if you can see this, this is a really long gap of nothing. So I'm gonna cut it right below that node. So it's quite long. There's a lot of spots there where the plant can root from. Um, and it's growing all weird. So there we go. And I'm just gonna stick her down in that pot as well. So there is a nice little cup of Maranta cuttings that will start to root soon. So that is the first plant. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, the next plant that I'm going to show you how I propagate it um, is this uh, Bonnie spider plant. Um, some of, uh, this is fairly characteristic for these plants, uh, especially as they get bigger, they tend to curl a little bit less in my experience. I'm not sure how to stop that, if maybe a little bit more light would help, I don't know. Anyway, it is what it is, it's still beautiful. So, um, what you wanna do with these guys is find these little, little babies here. And if you notice, I'm gonna try to get you up close here. Hold on one second. <laughs> on these little babies, there is a little node. So this is where the new roots will go from and there's a little node right there. So that's where you, um, what you wanna wait to see. So once you can see those, you're just gonna go ahead and cut it away from the mother plant. So there is your little baby spider plant. And I have ones that, um, I root mine in water just cause I like to watch um, the root growth. So these are a few of them that I cut a couple weeks ago. I'm trying to get one out here. They're all kind of stuck together at this point. So here's one and there is some roots. She's looking pretty good. And there's the roots on the other one. Again, some pretty good looking roots. So these guys I could go ahead and just pop into soil. Uh, so maybe I'll do that and then I'll put this new little babe right down in there. Um, now you just wanna make sure that you keep your water level up enough because if, those, uh, if that little node dries out, um, your cutting's not gonna make it. So there's our cute little spider plant baby, or little Bonnie. And then let's go ahead and put these in some soil. Okay, I've got my two little cups here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill them up with soil. Try not to bury the leaves if you can. <laughs> it's a little tricky. But it can be done. Stick that in there. Now these can be propagated other ways as well. You can root them in uh, soil and that works nicely. You can also set them on a damp paper towel in a shallow little dish and they will root that way. Um, but this is the method that I prefer. Now with these particular plants anyways, <laughs> because it does happen really, really quickly. So it's a little bit more instant gratification. So there is our first cute little baby there. And there is our second one. So I have my little dish here that I like to water in. Um, 
So we'll just give them a little water to settle the roots down in around there. Now, one thing that I will say, and um, I get asked questions a lot about, you know, transferring uh, propagations over to soil after they've rooted. Um, so the one thing that I will tell you, and this pretty much works with any plant, um, especially when you're propagating in water. So, and this is the, the a problem <laughs> or the problem when you're propagating in water. It works really well. I do it myself. Um, but what happens is the plant will actually grow uh, what we call water roots. And so then when you're transferring it to soil, the plant basically has to reacclimate its roots and grow soil roots. Um, so with most plants, excuse me, with most plants, I try not to propagate in water if I can help it just to make the transition easier or to minimize or completely negate the trans, uh, the transition period. Um, so this guy, I like to keep a little bit more moist for the first little while so that um, it's not a complete shot going from constantly having that, that water reservoir there to completely dry. Um, your cuttings won't take, so make sure you do keep it a little bit more on the moist side for the first little while. I would probably say at least for the first like month um, and let it grow some soil roots before you rain in the water and then rot water like as you regularly would. Okay, so there's the one. And there's the second one. They're so cute. These are some of my favorites to propagate because they're just adorable and they're so fun and super easy. Okay, let's move on to the next plant. Okay, the next plant that we're going to propagate and then we're going to move on to a little bit more tricky stuff. I shouldn't say tricky, just different. Um, so what I want to do, this uh, neon pothos is getting quite long, which is amazing. I wanted to do that. Uh, but I also want to grow some new ones um, to kind of fill out the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pot and put some cuttings into it. Uh, now these I will be rooting directly into soil. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Uh, so I think I'm going to take, how many can I fit in there? One, two, three, maybe six. So I'm going to take six nodes. Um, so this top one, because this is a new leaf, um, this particular node isn't going to be like overly, uh, we'll call it viable. Sometimes there just isn't enough leaf to be able to um, give the, the plant the energy enough to create that root. So I'm going to take this one below here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy right here. Okay, so we'll take that. I'll set this guy aside. Okay, we're gonna fill up this pot with soil first. Oh, before, after I dump it all over myself, of course. Now these pots are quite deep, completely unnecessary, um, but I don't have any one that's wide enough to do what I want, so I'm just going to use these. It'll be fine. So when you're doing this, you want to fill them up pretty much all the way. There, I have a nice, can you even see that? Let me tip you down just a smidge. There we go. Okay, so I have this pot. It's filled with soil. Uh, I don't have my little stick thing. Oh my gosh, I'm so unprepared. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is cut this into nodes. So right here, this is the node of the plant, or that, that leaf, so right where these little nubbins are. That's where the new roots will grow. So what we want to do is cut right here. So there's our first node cutting. Second one. Third one. Okay. 
fourth, and then our fifth and sixth. Okay, so we have all of our little nodes. And we're just gonna go ahead and bury them. Actually, I don't even know if I need this, but I'm, actually I'll use it anyways. So you're just gonna go ahead and put this little node, just kind of stick it down right into the soil. Might be a little difficult actually. I might have to do it just slightly on its side because of how it's, there we go. Okay, and then the next one. Now, I could have just taken that whole strand and plumped that down in here and that would grow fine. But what we're looking for is a bushier plant. So by cutting them into nodes like this, you'll have multiple growth points instead of just one if I was to just use that trailing bit. Because these, the way the leaves grew on these, I'm kind of having to plant them just down like this. And that's fine. The new leaf will find its way to the surface because we're not burying these like three to six inches or anything like that. They're just below the soil enough that they can root and get um, enough of the nutrients from that soil. And then we'll go ahead and put the last one right in the middle here. There we go. So we'll have all of our little cuttings in there and then we're just gonna go ahead and give it a really good water. Now the same thing with this one, now they're all gonna start to float. So I'll have to pack them back down in there. Um, but the same idea with this one, you wanna keep the soil a little bit more moist until they uh, start growing some good roots. And you'll know that they're growing roots. You don't wanna um, pull them out of the soil and check if there's roots because that will just slow the plant down even more. Um, but what you can do, so in you know a couple weeks or so, just give a little tug on the leaf. If it's even slightly difficult to tug on or uh, shows you any resistance, then it's probably got some roots that are holding on to some soil in there. Um, and I know that's why a lot of people like to root in water so they can see the root growth. But again, like I said before, you just kinda I, I mean, it's kind of stressful for the plant to have to grow two separate types of roots and I just don't think it's really necessary. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit more soil in and around here. This soil tends to um, deflate quite a bit. It is quite peaty. Now that I'm all dirty. Uh, but there we go. So I'll just go ahead and throw that in some nice bright light and uh, make sure I keep an eye on the watering. And in no time, we will have a big new pot of pothos. And then what I can do if I want afterwards is I can take these cuttings that when they're rooted and I can go ahead and pot them in that pot of my already existing plant so we can get a nice big full plant out of that. So that's probably what I'll do. I could have potted them right back down into that particular pot. Um, but the chances are I'm going to be repotting it in the spring, which is probably when I'll plant these into it anyway. It's been in the same soil for quite a while and it's definitely going to need a repot in the spring. So that's what I'll just go ahead and, and wait for. Okay, so let's move on to some Hoyas. Okay, so I've got my Hoyas here. So I'm going to propagate two different Hoyas today. We have this guy. So this is my Hoya Obscura, which grows like crazy. It's, it's insane. Uh, you can see some of its leaves are finally starting to look Obscura-esque. Um, so this guy's getting a little crazy, a little floppy. I've got this chopstick in here, but it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot. <clears throat> so we're gonna chop him up. Not a lot, but a little. And then we have my Hoya Australis Lisa here, who is uh, getting quite tall, a little lanky. 
uh, in here. So what I want to do, um, this guy's one that a lot of people I know are after, so I'd like to share some of this with friends. So I'm going to take a couple different cuttings off this one. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing this time, as opposed to what I normally do with Hoyas, normally I root Hoyas in spag moss, and that's always worked fine for me. However, um, what I'm going to try today is rooting directly into soil and um, so that, like I explained before, we don't have a, a lot of that difficulty transitioning uh, so we don't have to like repot the plant a lot <clears throat> and it doesn't have to like readjust its roots, etc. So this will definitely be an experiment because it's not something I've done before. So I've got my little pots here. I've got way more than I need, but <laughs> um, I like keeping these when I buy like little uh, cacti and succulents and then I just wash them and they are great for uh, uh, smaller propagations like Hoyas, um, like succulents and those kinds of things where you just need like a, a tiny little pot. Waste not, want not and all that. So I think I'm going to use a couple of these ones. <clears throat> so first let's go ahead and do this Lisa. I've got my clean scissors here and I think I'm just going to do maybe three node cuttings. So I don't know if you can see, I'll try to zoom in when I edit. There's one and where can we get you in there? Can you see that? Like two. Here's also a thing with Hoyas, they kind of bleed, you can see that, they have this little foam <clears throat> that they excrete, it's like a white sap. I try not to touch that, I don't know if it's toxic or not, probably not, but it's gross either way. <laughs> and then, oh, sorry buddy, ah. there we go, three. So I'll go ahead and set that aside. Now we have our three little bleeding cuttings here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up this pot. So I have my soil mix, it's uh, it's chunky, it's got a lot of bark in it. Hoya's like um, a well-draining, chunky mix. So we don't want it too dense and peaty. So I'm just going to kind of take the cutting and stick it right down in there and then maybe take just a smidgen of, there we go, easy peasy. So there's one. That's a big chunk. What is that? Okay, there's two. I'm not going to bury this guy too deep because this is the top cutting and he already has like a little growth point there on the top. So I don't want to put too, too much on the like very top there. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm just kind of going to try to fill it around the edge. And that's way too much, Nikki. What are you doing? There we go. Okay, so we have our three little... Lisa cuttings <clears throat> and for little cuttings like this I find it easiest and best to water with my little squirty bottle so I'm gonna grab that 
Okay, so you guys uh, are familiar with this. I talk about it a lot because I love it. <laughs> so it's easier just to use this rather than try to use a big clunky watering can or one of my jugs. So we just want to drench that really well. There we go, we're coming out the bottom. Number two. There we go. And number three. There we go. Now, in my experience, uh, Hoyas propagate best when kept in higher humidity. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is my tried and true little, normally I call it a spag bag, but I guess this isn't a spag this time. Uh, so I'm just going to set all three of these little cuttings in the bag. There we are. And then we're going to zip it up, blow some air in. Come on now, don't be difficult. There we go. There's our little Hoya Australis Lisa cuttings. So I'll go ahead and set that in my greenhouse and in no time we will have little Australis Lisa babies. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the Obscura. Okay, we got a lot of options here because there's a lot of different growth points. So let me get her undone. I suppose I could let her trail, but maybe I'll do that later. But we're gonna take some cuttings here. Okay, so we have two main stems from the soil, and then she just kind of branches every which way. So, I think, <laughs> she's all over the map. Uh, I think I'm going to take three from this one as well. Um, so the first one I'm going to take I think is this one right here. It does have little aerial roots that are starting right there so that'll give that a little bit of a boost. So there's one with her teeny tiny leaf. Can you see that? How cute is that? Adorbs. Oh, I'm all sticky. Oh, it bled on me. Ew. Okay, that's really sticky. Oh, it's like glue. That's not coming off. Okay, that's a soap for later. <coughs> um, I don't want to take all of the um, top pieces off. So, maybe... I'll take one more off this side. There's two. And then, oh. and then I'll take one more top. Okay, so there's three. She's still kind of floppy on the side. Let's take another one just for poops and giggles. It, like this stuff splatters everywhere. Okay, and there's a four leaf. So let's set her back over here. Oh, can you guys see this? It's like massacre all over my table. <clears throat> okay. So we have our four cuttings. And I'm going to just go ahead and I'll speed this part up because, I mean, it's the same exact thing, right? <laughs> There we go. There's all four of our little um, Obscura babies. So I'm just gonna do the same thing as I did with the other ones. I'll do that off camera. You don't need to watch that. So I'm just gonna bag them and stick them all in the greenhouse. <clears throat> okay, 
We have one more plant to propagate and then I am going to show you the update on our little spag versus <clears throat> perlite versus water experiment. Okay, so the next plant that I'm gonna propagate is this philodendron mammy. So uh, this thing has gone kind of crazy. I can back you out a little here. Well, not really. Um, so she has gotten huge. So she's actually got three different, there's this big, long, tall stem here, which was the original plant. And then it grew this whole second plant. And now it actually has, if you can see that this, these leaves are from a third plant. I'll try to insert a shot of uh, the bottom so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, but what I want to do is take a couple uh, cuttings off of this one here. So I'm hoping this is all focusing. Because um, it's getting a little crazy and um, all over the place. And I want some new propagations in the sky. So we'll go ahead and make the cuts here first and then I will take you down to the table and show you how I root them. So the first one we're gonna take, I think is this whole top piece right here. Um, now that leaf is awfully close. You can go somewhere else for a few moments, okay? Go over there. Okay, so you can see this leaf is awfully close, so I'm gonna have to be really careful because what I want is this one right here. So I want to take it down as far as I can, but I don't want to snap that other leaf off. I think I'll take it right there. So that's the first one. That'll be our top cutting. Okay. And then we're going to go down and we're going to take this one as well. There's number two. And... I think I'm going to take one more. So, just got to loosen up this a little bit. Where's the ends? There it is. Okay. Wrap that behind, and then I'm going to take this one right here as well. Without damaging that leaf, hopefully. Just bend her a smidge. The internodes are really, really small on this portion of the plant, so as long as we don't get any root uh, rot happening, hopefully this one's okay. It's a little shorter than I'd like, but okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this back up a little bit. Oh, are you stuck now? Yeah. Okay. This thing's growing all over the place. <laughs> All right, there we go. So she's all back up. She's got a little bit of a bare spot now, but that will fill in eventually. This is an old, old leaf, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back and then we'll take you down to the table and I'll show you how I propagate those. Okay, so we have our three cuttings. So there is one, two, and Three. Now, usually I propagate these in sphagnum. I'm not sure if I've got enough in here to do all three. So if not, maybe we'll try rooting one in water. I don't know. Um, this is still damp. It's not as moist enough as, or as moist as I would like it, but we can always water it after. Uh, so this is really easy. You guys have seen me do this a million times. So I just take, oh, we zoomed in. No. Nope. So you just take the moss, wrap it around the node of the plant, and then literally just stick it in the moss, and that's all. And I'll go ahead and give that a little bit of a spray, and then she's good to go. Easy peasy. Let's do our next one. Same thing. 
Just grab the moss, put it around the node. <coughs> And stuff her in there. A little water. And there's number two. And then last but not least, we have our little cutesy top cutting here. <coughs> and we're just going to do the same thing. And plunk her right in there. Give her some water. Of course, why not? There we go. Okay. And there is cuttings one. Two and three. Just like that. Super easy. And once upon a time, I was terrified to propagate any of my plants. I was so scared that I was going to lose them. But I think it's one of those things that if you just kind of try it, <laughs> um, and you know, try different propagation methods. Uh, the experiment that I'm doing that I'll show you in a minute um, was. You know, a couple of them I've never done before, and uh, but you're not going to know until you try. That's my favorite part. I think just is about seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, watching something grow, and definitely that feeling of accomplishment when you actually grow it. So let me go ahead and show you the update on our propagation experiment with our uh, philodendron varicosa melanocrysum, and then I will let you get back to your regularly scheduled Sundays. Okay, these have now been two weeks, uh, I think. Yeah, I think two weeks uh, since we did the experiment. Uh, so let's go ahead and check in on how they're doing. So here is the one that we are growing in water. Remember at this point, we're just looking for roots. Um, some of these had growth points, so I'm not really gonna count that in the experiment. Uh, so let's take a look up close here. Not looking like a whole lot going on there. No new root, root growth. Those little aerial roots were there when I put it in the water. So that's a big old zero for the water so far. Let's take a look at the perlite. So let's pull him out gently here. Oh, okay. Okay. So here we actually have some root growth. Let me get you up close here. You can see that little root growing right down the side here. We also have another little one here and a little one here. So that is progress, folks. We have roots. That's very exciting. Okay, so so far, perlite for the win, or that is taking the lead, at least. We will stick her back down in there. Okay. Are you guys surprised? What did you vote for? Lastly, let's take a look at our moss. And it looks like we've got no roots on this one either. Well, this is very surprising to me. Um, I am definitely, as you know, a spag moss propagator. And uh, I definitely was not expecting the spag or the uh, perlite to win, to be completely honest with you. So that is quite exciting. I mean, we're not near the end of the experiment yet. Some may just have a slower start and we may get something pulling into the lead here. But so far, perlite is ahead by a mile. Who knew? <laughs> Okay, guys, I will go ahead and wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed seeing the different ways that I propagate certain plants and learning a little bit about how to propagate. 
Um, I also hope you enjoyed these uh, the update on these guys. I think that's a total shocker for me. I definitely wasn't expecting that, but that's really exciting because it is um, the first time that I have propagated in perlite, so maybe it's my new faves. Who knows? <laughs> Um, okay guys, if you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. I would definitely appreciate that. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Oh, I would like to say, please make sure you have your notification bell turned on. Uh, I do have a really cool uh, Halloween spooky collab coming up on Friday where I'll be sharing with you an extremely personal and extremely scary story of my own. Um, really looking forward to sharing that with you and you guys um, meeting the people I'm collabing with. <clears throat> so make sure you look out for that. That is this Friday, October 30th. I don't want to spill the beans yet as to who it is. Um, just rest assured that it is super fun, super spooky, and I am so super excited. If I said super enough, probably. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel and I really do appreciate it. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to end this now. <laughs> I would like you all to have a great day, night, week, month, year. I love you all to bitty bits and I will see you in the next one. Mwah!